adults can talk all they want about cultural change and culture in school, but really when kids talk about change of culture in school, that that's when people really kind of sit up and listen. And we would like to change the way that school is done, but we really, as adults, if we just do that to students, uh, I think we will just perpetuate the same cultural institutional knowledge that we have. So how could we ask students to co-construct and co-create with us a different school experience? Because they really do have wonderful ideas. I first thought, this is crazy <laughs> because she like talked about the end product and how we'd be performing it and like saying our speech in front of like so many important people. And I kind of thought like, this is crazy. How am I going to be able to do this? But like the process going through it was pretty fun to learn about like a subject that we were passionate about. And I'm very excited to voice my opinion. One of our questions was, what would you say stresses you the most out in school? The highest percentage we received was with the answer, amount of schoolwork at 30% followed by social aspects and testing both at 20%. Teenagers spend far too much time sitting down and doing schoolwork, and this affects kids' health negatively. Today, we will discuss the effects of overworking and our solutions to reduce the excess of unnecessary work in order to lower the stress levels of students. So traditionally, in solving a school-based problem, I would go to our student government association, you know, share the problem with them, get their feedback and suggestions, and then oftentimes then take it back to our leadership team of department chairs, and then we would come up with a solution or how to move forward. This really changes that paradigm quite a bit in the sense that now we're building it right into the curriculum where the students in their classes on a daily basis now are looking for how do we solve this problem or how do we make school better? Um, so I think that completely changes. It kind of turn, changes that model upside down. Now they're bringing together the solutions to us. I, I was definitely surprised because you always like they, the teachers and the administration are always like, we want input from the students and like we care about what you guys have to say, but we never actually have like a chance to give our feedback and what we think. So when she was like, we want you to write a speech about like essentially what sucks in school and what we want it, like what, how we want it to change. I was like, well, that's a good opportunity. Like they finally took like, they finally followed through on their word. Our world is evolving constantly. Look at the difference between cars 20 years ago and cars today. The differences are distinct and obvious. Change is needed. It's a natural occurrence, and yet somehow, school has avoided major change. As an English teacher, that essential curriculum is critical reading, analysis, writing, research, and presentation skills. So I know that through this project that the students can develop the essential skills and knowledge that they need for their curriculum. I want to start by asking how many of you feel like you have more work than necessary on a day-to-day -day basis? Raise your hand if you feel stressed due to the amount of work you're assigned for homework. Keep your hands up if you truly believe the homework you receive is beneficial to your learning. I think, okay, so this is a high interest topic for my students that they see that their peers are struggling in school, um, either with mental health, physical health, or accessing the curriculum, engaging in their learning. Um, and so I thought, well, if this is a high interest area for students, then this can be the pathway through uh, which students um, can access the curriculum. They would now be able to, to identify a problem, do some research on the problem, consider some solutions that are pragmatic, uh, identify other places that um, have in, in, uh, implemented those solutions, and to be able to share that with the right audience in the right way for a constructive message. And that's in a month and a half. The grading system in AP classes is an issue because it doesn't allow students to receive feedback and grow from their mistakes. Science petitions uh, for more computer science classes and have, uh, you know, 
try to knock down the principal's door until... Uh, <laughs> Including the administration in the process of this um, is really helpful because they are the ultimate audience, so it's important to engage them from the beginning to help them also see that what they are going to think about and create is of interest and relevancy to their personal community, but also their community beyond that, and that there are people who truly care and want to know about what they're learning. So I brought to the students and shared with them three or four different uh, common texts that we could analyze together. Then we had Socratic seminars about their interpretation of the text, the evidence that they saw of the problems, of some solutions that were being uh, recommended, and also how what they saw was related to the same problems that they noted in their school community. So looking at some of the current research and writing on the same topic, what connections could they make to that? So they saw themselves in that. Uh, but also the Socratic seminars uh, generated some divergence of thought, which was really um, helpful too for them to see that these are topics that there are many different interpretations, perspectives, and different ways that people go about trying to solve these problems. In my mind, the most important piece was that they had the most time to conduct the research because whatever they said needed to be well considered with research. And if they had the evidence, writing the speech would be not easy, but it would be easier. So choosing their topics uh, actually was a very easy part of the process. They felt passionately about a topic from the get-go and they continued most of them with that topic. I was excited because I've never written a speech before and I, I found it like really interesting to like have this research and find out more about this stuff and I like did research for hours just because I was interested. Classes need to change. The amount of busy work that is given to students is absurd. Classes are tiring to sit through, but we can change that by changing how school systems want to learn. FCPS. Um, I just found it interesting because like, I could, I've seen so many kids just break down in class just because of the amount of stress that like, is on the students. And so I'm like, if we could just change something, like that'd be nice to see, like not have kids breaking down and tired all the so, time. Now, after you've listened to the things that are wrong with school, we ask you to think how you can start making either small changes to your classroom, the school you work at, or how you look at your child as a student. Standing up in front of a group of people as an individual, very intimidating. And so having the students collaborate, bringing their research together could, could work well. I matched the students more by personality than by topic affinity. Having a successful partnership experience oftentimes trumps the topic choice. Um, if you can work together, you can work together about anything. I did have some students who wanted to work alone, and we did have some conversations about that. And at the end of the day, I, of course, allowed the students who felt very strongly that they really needed to work alone, um, honored that. Students knew going into the presentations that they could give a live presentation or they could videotape their presentation and it could be um, something that we shared as a videotaped experience instead of a live experience. So they had a lot of choice in the ways in which they could um, share their ideas. They could have slides or not. They could have their whole speech written out and they could read it word for word, which some of them did, or not. They could have note cards. So really it was wherever they are in their entry point of being able to do public speaking. And I, they really appreciated the fact that they didn't have to do it live if they didn't want to. And I was very surprised in then chatting with the students later in the process that the majority said, yes, I just want to give the speech. I'm excited to want to give it live on that date. 
Writing the speech was a basic uh, outline first of you need to have an engaging hook, but more than that, we talked a little about just rhetorical situation and rhetorical structure and the fact that you are speaking to a specific audience. And number one, who are you speaking to? You have this topic, who is your audience? Uh, number two, what is your purpose? At the end of the day, you really need to get clear on what do you want your audience to do based upon your information. And I think just setting them up, that was the first page of their outline, and giving them feedback on that part was an essential step. Debate and discuss solutions for world issues with their peers. The first time we really saw it uh, was when she did the rough draft and she actually practiced it. And uh, we were blown away by how a 10th grader um, would be, you know, using this material in a classroom and uh, pretty impressive for the teacher to involve um, the students the way um, she had. We were so fortunate to have the George Mason University Communication Center coaches and some professors come in and give the students feedback on their outlines. Really, the students came to that experience with an outline of ideas, and they got some wonderful feedback uh, from the center coaches that I think really opened their eyes to, uh, one, this is what people do in the real world, and these are essential skills, and two, there are people out there that can help me and give me quality feedback on my thinking other than my English teacher. Everything was done in class, and my role was really to just to walk around every day, have conversations with every pair team. How are you doing? Where are you? What do you need from me? And um, can I just eyeball this? We all know at the end of the day, my feedback is actually not the most important feedback. So engaging and having parents come in and listen to some student um, speeches and giving them feedback or before then giving feedback on their outlines and their ideas, engaging others in the process to give the kids feedback uh, along the way. Um, is, is not only lightening your load, but also um, engaging more people in the conversation and, and having a broader discussion. I'm not nervous, I'm really excited. Like, I really hope what I say can help like change students' lives. Um, I mean, it, I think it does change it a little bit. I think it like puts pressure on it, but I'm like, I'm still too excited to be nervous. So having an authentic audience and knowing that their principal was going to listen to them and knowing that their parents were going to be invited and that other staff and individuals from the county curriculum office and um, anybody else, counselors, just knowing that they were having that authentic audience, uh, one, made them, of course, want to produce a quality product, and two, I think, just felt valued. They really just knew that there's somebody else out there listening to them um, and that we, we care. I think the right question is what are the important problems you want to solve and what are the skills, the competencies, and the mindsets you want to get good at and then to take a leadership role in your own education and make sure you're putting yourselves in education experiences that help you develop those. With any kind of public speaking you kind of have to think of it as like a real world application so there was that aspect, but then yeah, it was a lot more like, oh wow, I'm presenting this to people who can actually make a change instead of just like my classmates. And there was never a rubric that told them that if they didn't have this, 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 and this, or if they weren't, you know, if they hemmed or hawed, um, that they would get points off. The rubric was never around points. It was around just elements. And they're, they're not worried about their grade. Um, they've been worried about whether or not they actually meet those elements and whether or not they make their families or their self proud or their partner proud. Our students deserve better. So I urge you, for the sake of, our, of my sister and for all others who struggle with their mental health, help Madison and help our, their students. Thank you.
Uh, one thing that nobody talked about was learning about time management and how to put together, you know, your activities and your homework and your need for sleep. Not even about the distractions, the amount of work that's given, like the amount of work that is unnecessary and that's not helping students that's given is causing these problems. Going off of that, um, I take two AP classes this year and I'm a sophomore. And with that, I go to bed, and I'm very productive with my time, usually after school, and I don't really do that much outside activities, but I go to bed usually at 1 or 3 a.m. each night because of just doing homework. And I think that's just because teachers are like saying that we need to um, incorporate our like time management, but with that, there's still homework to do, so we can't just like stop doing our homework just to go to bed. And the fact that, like, Oh, I think it was your speech. It was like homework is doing like no good for us. Then why are we getting so many hours of it? Like, what's the point if it's not helping us? If I'm like the one person who's like, I'm gonna change, like I'm gonna change the system. I need a lot more people to go along with that than just me because like one person against a 900 person crowd is probably gonna get trampled. So like. How am I, just one person, gonna change everything? So I just wanna say again, I appreciate you really. Some of you poured your heart out today as a part of your presentations in this discussion, and thank you very much. We're gonna be using this to make some changes at Madison, so I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. So another important next step is actually not to lose this learning, but to apply it. What might we wanna to come together and collectively tackle. Um, instead of trying to do all of our ideas, what do we want to, um, as a community, um, put some of our um, shared thinking and resources into? I would try and maybe start talking to more administrators and stuff like that and like present to them as well and just kind of be, and just kind of say to them, there's a lot of issues and we need to see change if we want the um, school education system to be matched up with the modern world. The idea at this point is to take some of the best presentations, some of the things that we think we really can implement, whether it's on a small scale or large scale, and then have those groups of students present out to the full faculty, or at least to our department chairs around, hey, these are some great ideas, what can we do with it? Be good to yourself and just don't expect to do this well, right, and perfectly by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but if you keep the essentials in mind, that you know that you know these are the four things I hope the kids get out of it, or the three things, and stay true to that. The advice I'd give is first, do it. Like, don't even consider it anymore, just do it. It's definitely worth it. And then I'd tell the teacher to make sure the students know that like, don't think about the grade for this or maybe not even make it graded, just focus on what you want to change because that it really engages the students and it makes it just, it makes it worth it. Because if schools continue the way they have, they will have failed my generation and generations to come. And that is a failure we should fear. Oh, you can make change. Like if you try hard enough, you can, but we were actually given the opportunity and we, it, we were shown that we can do it and we have like steps to get there now. And this seems like something that goes beyond school. It can like, it can change lives. It can make someone's school experience so much better. So it feels like we're doing this for other people and it feels very good to be able to like put a lot of effort in that and see a lot come out of it.